Make it 3-0 on the current road trip for the injury-riddled Boston Celtics. What opened up as a scorcher in Phoenix wound up a fairly sleepy run-of-the-mill 102-94 victory. Welcome into the Boston Celtics News Feed post-game recap brought to you by 4 I'm Mike Walsh reporting for CLNS Media. Boston continued taking care of business against the NBA's bottom feeders, sweeping a road back-to-back in Sacramento and Phoenix. The Celtics have now won four straight. After the game, CSN NE's Abby Chin heard from Al Horford about the team's night and how they've been dealing with so many injuries. Quote, Second night of a back-to-back needed to come out with good energy, and we did that. It's great. It shows the character and heart this team has. We're not worried about individual stuff. We're worried about the team. Guys are showing that. End quote. Boston went ahead big, 20 points big early on, and were shooting the Arizona lights out in the first half. Still playing without Kyrie Irving and Marcus Smart, though, the offense did falter eventually, and Phoenix rode the hot hand of Rookie of the Year candidate Josh Jackson to catch back up. Boston, which scored 41 points in the first 15 and a half minutes of game time, went into the half with just a three-point lead. Quick break here to tell you about 4 My greatest fear in life, personally, is losing my hair. And looking at some of the elders in my family, it's just something that's coming. So that's why I'm thrilled to tell you about 4 It's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. 4 is going to connect you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. Head over to 4 and get a trial month for just 5 bucks while supplies last. Go to F-O-R-H-I-M-S.com slash C-L-N-S. That's 4 slash C-L-N-S. Out of the break, Phoenix actually managed to tie things up and totally eliminate that 20-point lead that Boston once held. They took a slim lead of their own on a Troy Daniels tray early in the third. Boston continued to hold serve, though, with Marcus Morris hitting some big shots, including a jumper to push the lead back to double digits at 70-59 to with two minutes remaining. Unfortunately, Morris, who temporarily joined the ranks of the injured Celtics for a one-game absence Sunday night, re-injured his sprained ankle at the end of the third quarter. He was run through while jacking up a desperation buzzer beater three and came up limping. He gingerly drained all three freebies, though, with half a second on the clock. Those three gave him 20 points for his third straight game, but they were also his last three points of the night. He went to the locker room and did not return with a sprained right ankle. After the game, reports came out that Morris had an x-ray on his ankle, but the results were negative. The lead was 77-65 after Morris's foul shots. Boston ground away in the fourth quarter with a lot of bench minutes and a lot of Suns mistakes. Horford, who had 19 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists, turned an awful turnover by Phoenix into a triple and an 85-71 lead. Boston's own Rookie of the Year candidate, Jason Tatum, crossed up Marquise Chris with 9-13 left to keep the lead at 14. Tatum went for 23 points on 10 of 18 shots, matching Josh Jackson's night. Jackson, who was taken one spot after him last June at number four overall, had a chance to cut the deficit back to single digits with 2.30 left, but missed two free throws with his squad down 10. A Terry Rozier three all but sealed it, putting Boston ahead 98-83. to Tatum scored the 1,000th point of his rookie season in the win, joining just five other Celtics, Ron Mercer, Dino Raja, Antoine Walker, Dave Cowens, and of course Larry Bird, who scored 1,490 points in 1980. Jalen Brown started his second straight game back after missing considerable time with a concussion. He again played 25 minutes on the minutes restriction, had 7 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and shot 3 of 11 from the field. Phoenix was playing without star Devin Booker, who was averaging 24.9 points per game and dropped 70 on the Celtics, as you may remember last season. Just before tip-off, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported that the Celtics had signed G-leaguer Xavier Silas to a 10-day contract using part of their hardship exception. He's expected to join the team on Wednesday. The Celtics are off Tuesday, as you may have figured. They will travel to Utah, where they will face the streaking Jazz at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Keep it tuned to CLNSmedia.com for updates on Marcus Morris' status. And be sure to follow along to all of our Celtics coverage at CelticsCLNS on Twitter. Until next time, this has been Newsfeed Manager Mike Walsh reporting for CLNS.